it's Kathy Cress again, and we are doing a playlist of the concierge client. And now we're going to go through some of the typical concierge clients. And we're going to start out with a rich and famous family. And for you, for a lot of you that watch Downton Abbey, I'm going to compare Downton Abbey to the rich and famous. And you know, you'll get through the metaphor what I'm talking about. Well, I think the series has already start, started in Britain, so if you're there, you already know these secrets. Uh, but in America, it's going to start, I think, in January. But we remember several episodes, there was Mr. Richard Carlyle, and he was trying to court Mary, and uh, she rejected him. And he basically said that he was going to reveal her secret that she had slept with uh, a man who had come into the, 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 the giant house. Uh, he threatened her, he was going to bribe her. Well, this is the rich and famous now. <laughs> you can really see it. They are, uh, they're up there, you know, upstarts. They haven't had money for a whole long time. Carlisle was, you know, he really didn't. You know, he didn't have money, and because he was a publisher, you know, he then had the money and thought that he could get whatever he wanted. Uh, so the rich and famous are really different than uh, they are the people like Clint Eastwood. I think he's probably a nice, rich and famous guy. Uh, just think of his advertisement uh, on the uh, Republican, <laughs> the Republican, uh, you know, uh, contest uh, with uh, the chair. Uh, you, uh, but you know, he's rich and famous people are people who have just recently made money, and they're um, they have some different attitudes. What they do have is money, and that's the kind of client you want that can afford again you long term. Um, but they have some really bad, uh, you know, personality deficits. Um, they have no involvement with care because they've just gotten money and they're like, you know, Richard Carlyle, off with their head. You don't do what I want, marry them. You know, I'm scandalizing you. Um, they haven't learned decorum that the old money has. Um, when you pay them, they expect abject uh, availability. <laughs> Here, the piano player in Nordstrom's, and that's how Richard treated all the servants. You know, the home staff in Downton Abbey. And I pay you, therefore I own you. Uh, you know, Richard, you know, a lot of the people in Downtown Abbey, we, we kind of love them. You know, even though they have a lot of money and they're ordering people around. He was like a cad. Uh, the powerful and wealthy also get a lot of free stuff. If you think about Hollywood stars, they're always getting free things, you know, to, you know, especially when they're on the Oscars, like a whole package. Um, and since they get those for free, they think a lot of times your services should be free. <laughs> That's not a good. Uh, and they look at you as a caregiver. They really don't look at, me, look at you as a professional. Uh, so they feel like they can order you around. And uh, they don't like overtime. <laughs> they don't like after hours rates because they've only recently been rich. They're, you know, they're the nouveau rich. So uh, the what, rich and uh, famous are kind of different than the old moneyed concierge client. And now we're going to talk about them next time. Of course, using Downton Abbey, because I love it and you love it. See you next time.